Hey guys, this is Alex from MacHeads101 with another iPhone programming tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the UI menu controller to bring up a little menu that lets the user select a couple of options and does something different for every option that they press. Uh, in this particular example, we're just going to be changing an image whenever they click on a certain option for an image. But there are so many more things that you can do with this, like copy and paste, or changing the color of something, just so many more things. Uh, but in order to get started, we're going to go into Xcode, go to File, New, New Project. And then under iOS, we'll go to Application, View-Based Application, and we'll call it Menu Testing. And we will make it for the iPhone. And let's go ahead and create. There we go. Now, we're going to be using three images in this example. Fish.png, Stripes.png, and Grass.png. I'll probably have a link to these in the description if you want them. Uh, or you can use your own images if you're following this tutorial. But uh, all we have to do to use these with our Xcode is we just select all of them and we drag them into supporting files. Then we make sure that copy items into destination groups folder is checked and we hit finish. And now you'll see them right down here in Xcode. You can browse through them. That means they're in our project. Now we can go into the menu testing view controller.h and we're going to create an IB outlet for an image view. This is the image view that we're going to be changing whenever the user clicks on or taps on an item in the menu controller. So we're going to have an IB outlet, UI image view, image view. All right, now we're going to go into the XIB. And I'll just bring up the attributes inspector, which comes with the library. And we'll drag in the image view. Now, in order to get our code to recognize it, we just have to hold control while clicking from files owner over to our image view, click down and save by pressing command S. There we go. Now we have the image view set up. Now, if you'll recall from the example I just showed you, there are going to be three buttons that the user hits to change the image to one of these three images. So we're going to need three actions that get called when each one of the items in this uh, menu gets tapped. So we're going to declare three voids. Uh, how about fish, stripes, and grass. Now, uh, note that I'm not making them IB actions. You can, but there's no reason to because we're not setting these up with Interface Builder, so you don't need to do that. But I'll just copy these over into our .m, throw them in there, add some curly braces around the functions, and there we go. All right, so now we're going to be doing a couple of things. Uh, when they tap on the view, when they tap anywhere on the screen, we want it to display a menu controller. So if you'll recall from our previous tutorials, the way to get notified whenever the user taps on the screen is by using touches began. So I'll just implement a method called touches began, uh, and this will get called whenever they tap on the screen. So right here, we're going to create our menu controller with the buttons that we want whatever. So the first step to this is to create our items, the three items that we're going to have in this menu. So UI menu item, item one, UI menu item alloc init with title, and we'll give it, I'll make the first one fish and I'll make it the fish action. So this is how to create a UI menu item. Uh, this is just represents one of the items in the menu. So we give it a title. In this case, it's going to be fish. That's just the text that'll be there in the menu. And then the selector is the action. The selector is just the function to get called when they tap on it. So in this case, it's fish. This corresponds with this. And that's how it knows about this. Now we're going to copy and paste this line twice over. So that way we have three items. I'm going to call this one stripes and call this one grass. And change this to stripes and change this to grass. And now we're going to actually set up the menu controller itself. Now, if you'll notice, if you've used iOS, if you used menu controllers in other apps on the App Store or whatever, you'll notice that there's never more than one menu on the screen at once. And that's because there's only one menu controller, and it's called the shared menu controller. It's shared. You can't, um, you know, there's only one. So in order to have... Um, a menu controller you need to access the shared menu controller and set its items and all that stuff so in order to get the shared menu controller you can do this UI menu controller controller equals UI menu controller shared menu controller 
Uh, now, I know I just said menu controller like three times, but uh, ignore that. So there's basically a function just to get the shared menu controller and assign it to, uh, you can just assign it to a variable. So now controller is the menu controller that we're going to be using. Uh, now, in order to tell it about these items, we have to use a method called set menu items. Very straightforward. We just give it an array, array with objects, and we'll give it item one, item two, item three. Okay, uh, and then we'll terminate it with nil to close curly braces. Everything's good. Now we say controller set target rect, and the reason we have to set the target rect is because, for instance, let's say the user hit a button or they tapped uh, a menu item or a ta uh, an item in a table view. We have to tell the menu controller where it should pop up at. So uh, for a button, we tell it where the button is and what the button's frame is, and it would pop up in the middle of the button. Uh, for now, we're just going to be giving it the entire frame, the entire rectangle of our entire app, uh, or of our main view, but in, in a little bit, we're going to be changing this. So we'll give it CG rect, make, 0, 0, 320, and 460, half out, and self.view. Uh, and this is just the, a big rectangle that you can picture. It, it covers our entire view. So the menu controller will actually come up in the middle of our view because we're giving it the whole frame of our view and it just pops up in the middle of wherever you give it. Uh, and now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to set menu visible. Yes. And animated will be yes. Um, so if you don't want it to fade in or fade out, you can just use uh, no here instead. All right, that's all good. All right, now uh, there's a couple things I need to explain to you guys, and you might be wondering this as you're watching this tutorial. Uh, some of you probably aren't, but the question I had when I was first trying to figure out how to use UI menu controller is, how does the menu controller know where to call the action? It knows the name of our selector, but how does it know that the selector is not over here in our app delegate? or in some other class, you know, it could be in a number of places other than right in our view controller. Uh, and normally for buttons, we set the target to be self or we add a target uh, and give it self. Um, but how do you think menu controller could possibly know where to send the where to send the action if we don't tell it? And the truth is that it uses a mechanism called the responder mechanism, basically. Uh, so the first responder is the the view or the control that's currently being used by the user so for instance let's say they tapped on uh, or they're typing in a text field that would be the first responder uh, but in this case we're gonna make the first responder our view controller so that way it knows to call the function on fish or on our view controller like fish or stripes or grass or anything like that so uh, in order to do that we just need to become the first responder so right up here, we're going to say self become first responder. Now, uh, in general, the responder mechanism checks when you make something a, a the first responder, it checks if it can actually become the first responder. And in order to do that, it calls a function called can become first responder. Very straightforward. Now, we need to return yes for this function. So we're going to implement it right in our view controller, and we'll return yes. So all that this does is it tells the controller that we are the first responder, that self is the first responder. That way it knows to call the functions right here and not somewhere completely random somewhere else. Maybe if the user is a text field selected, they might uh, it might send these selectors to the text field and that would break a lot of stuff. You know, your app would crash. So we certainly need to do this with the become first responder. Now, there's one more thing, and I thought this was a bit overkill, but they did it anyway. Um, what menu controllers do when when they're first becoming initialized is they check if all of the selectors can actually be called. So they check if this is valid, and if this is valid, and if this is valid. And they do it in a very strange way. So you actually need to implement another method in your view controller called can perform action. All right, and this takes a selector, which is the action, and it'll it'll call this for all the actions we give up here and all these items. So we need to return yes. We need to tell it yes, we can perform this action if it's any of these, if it's fish, stripes, or grass. Um, 
and we need to tell it no otherwise. That's another important key to do. So we say if action equals selector fish will return yes and if action equals selector stripes will return uh, return yes and also if the action is grass will return yes and otherwise will return no uh, basically what this will do is it'll go through it'll say okay are they checking if we can perform fish if if they are then we can if they're if they want to know if we can do stripes we'll tell them yes we can if they want to know if we can do grass we'll tell them yes we can now if we haven't told them yes we can it's pretty likely that we can't so we'll tell them no right at the bottom um, so now we're just about ready to write our code in in fact we're completely ready to write our code for all of these things when the user taps on any of these uh, so let's say they tap on fish. We're going to set the image of image view that we set up here to the picture of fish. So we're just going to say image view, set image, UI image, image named fish.png. Simple as that. And we're going to copy that over to stripes and grass and change it to stripes.png and grass.png. All right, excellent. So uh, this should all work fine. Let's go ahead and run it and wait for it to run so here it is alright that's fine we can tap and we click on it boom what do you know it changes the image the way we want it to uh, the only problem and I mentioned this earlier is that no matter where we tap this menu comes up in the middle of the screen um, so that can get annoying you know you tap somewhere and it just doesn't pop up there that's kinda confusing and to a user that would be kinda misleading they'd be like what you know so you want to we want to now get where they tapped and give a rectangle surrounding where they tapped so that way it knows where to to show the controller so in order to get the coordinates where they tap using touches began we just say cg point tap point equals touches any object location in view self dot view and now this is our variable that contains the x and y coordinates of where they tapped now this doesn't just take x and y coordinates, this set, set target rect right here. It takes a rectangle. So uh, the way we're going to do it is we're just going to create a rectangle that's at the coordinates where the user tapped and it has one width and one height. So we're going to just say tap point dot x, tap point dot y, and then the width will be one pixel and the height will be one pixel. Simple as that. Now the rectangle is one by one pixel, so it's just going to put the menu controller right, right, right where they tap, basically. So now we go ahead and start it up again. And here it is. No matter where I tap, the menu controller comes up right there. So I can tap there. I can tap there. It even, if you'll notice, it even flips it upside down if we tap too high. That way it looks better. Uh, so that's pretty neat. Um, the last thing I will point out um, and this is a concern that m most of you probably don't understand, but it is important when you're working on large projects, is memory management. So uh, right here, and I wasn't going to do this initially so I wouldn't confuse you, but uh, this is actually the right way to do it, and you should always do this. If you ever alloc something, that means allocate. So this was allocated, this was allocated, and this was allocated. Nowhere else do we say alloc, so that's all good. But item 1, 2, and 3 are all allocated. That means that once we give them to something else, uh, we can, we have to release them. Now, the app won't crash if we don't release them. There will be no problem unless we do this a couple thousand times and we just don't need them anymore and they'll still be in memory clogging up the system, if you will. Uh, but in general, it's always good to release everything that you're never using. It's just the way it is. You have to do that. So we're going to say item one, release item 2 release and item 3 release and this will basically say okay we're not using these anymore so uh, we're releasing them we're letting them out we're giving them away we're freeing them so that's all we're doing here it'll work exactly the same um, but it'll be better just because uh, we're releasing the memory and it'll use slightly less memory if you ever check that but it won't really make that much of a difference for this kind of thing but um, yeah that is how to use menu controllers uh, for the iPhone. 
Uh, this can be used for, like I said at the beginning, a lot of things other than what I showed you in this video. This was just a very basic example. Um, but generally, they're used for copy and paste, stuff like that. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel. So thanks for watching MacCavs101. Subscribe and goodbye.